Yes, I have a mic attached to my necklace. Good to go. Hey coding cutie, how you doing? I know it's been a while, it's been a hot minute, but we are back in business today for probably my favorite video to date. Today, we are going to talk about data science and also about life, my two favorite things. I really, really love this video, comparing lessons learned as a data scientist to lessons learned as a human. So I really hope that between the data science lessons and the life lessons, there's a little bit of something in this video for everyone. To be clear, this video will not be about any data science skills. Yes, data science taught me a ton about communication, programming, solving data problems, working with data, but this video will not be about any of that. What it will be about is unexpected lessons learned in my time working as a data scientist on the job. These aren't things I would have learned from school or self-study, so it's a little bit more juicy and exclusive. Exclusive. In case you actually do want to learn the data science skills that can land you a job, you should check out 365 Data Science, our lovely sponsor for today's video. Without them, I'd probably still be procrastinating putting this up. So thank you, 365 Data Science. They offer a complete data science curriculum to take you from zero to data science hero and an employed one at that. It's one of the most reputable and fan favorite data science learning platforms out there. And if that's not enough, they have a brand new site. And to celebrate, they are giving you free access to all of the courses on the site. So if you're trying to learn some data science skills to help you land a job, please go check it out. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Link is in the description. All right, now back to the teachings of data science and modern human existence brought to you by a data freak who wants an excuse to play life coach. Our first lesson of the day is protect the P-I-I. Protect it. Guard it with your life. What is P-I-I? I'm not even sure that every data scientist would actually know this term, depending on their industry and the type of data they work with, they may not be familiar. For me, it was a huge part of my job as a data scientist working in banking. And PII stands for personally identifiable information. In other words, attributes or data fields within a data set related to people that can help identify who the people in the data set are. Some examples of data fields that would be PII are things like your name, your address, your email address, your credit card number, your birth date, anything that can help give away your identity. So if you, my coding cutie, are a data point within someone's data set, which you most certainly are, there will be many cases where the data nerd who is responsible for working with your data has your life in their hands. That data nerd will have to mask or eliminate any attributes that are PII that are related to your identity and that can help disclose it. Now we may wanna do this for a variety of reasons, including preventing potential sources of bias or discrimination from entering a model. But the main reason for removing PII is to protect sensitive data by keeping it on a need to know basis. There is no need for me to know your name or your email address if I'm just trying to predict which product you're most likely to click on an ad for. So I shouldn't know it. Get it out of there. Get it out of my site. It's a liability. So this first lesson that I learned actually has a very practical life lesson that very closely relates to it. If you plan on ditching this video, like if you're not impressed so far, please just hear me out for this first lesson. It's the most important one that I'm gonna talk about. So listen up. You should always protect your personal information more than you protect most other things in your life. And this was much easier to do about a generation or two ago, but now that our entire lives have migrated over to the interwebs, we can really put our safety in danger by being reckless with where we're leaving our PII lying around. And of course, this refers to very obvious examples like your passwords, credit card numbers, social security numbers, and that kind of thing. But there is one less obvious example that I would really like to draw your attention to. <clears throat> giving away too much about yourself to too many people on social media. Here's the thing. Once you put something online, it can potentially be online forever. And online means accessible by anyone in the world with an internet connection. Just take that in. Think about the kind of reach we're talking about here. You might be thinking, you're being crazy, damsel and data. I only have like 400 Instagram followers. Let's cut the drama. And yes, it's a worst case scenario, but it's a very possible scenario. It sounds dramatic until something gets out to someone you don't want it to get out to 
and you have to learn this the hard way. So better to just learn it the easy way and think before you post. This of course means being mindful when you're posting or DMing certain photos, videos, or comments to people, but it also means being mindful of potentially exposing certain metadata. For example, there is no reason to be tagging a location in your Instagram story while you're still in that location. You're basically screaming to everyone who cares, this is where you can find me right now, this is where I am. I would also avoid giving away location information like when and where you'll be on vacation, when and where you're going out to dinner, um, things like where your neighborhood is or where your work neighborhood is. You know, a lot of people post stories like going to work, going home, and you know, people can very easily recognize where you're going even if you don't necessarily tag the location. It's not good to let people in on your day-to-day -day life rituals and where you'll be on a daily basis. You might think like, what can they do with this information? But people have very creative ways of doing very evil things. So just be careful, be mindful. Basically ask yourself this before you post anything. Would I be okay? with this content and this information being out there forever. Once it's out there once, anyone who has access to it at that time can take it and do as they please with it. Now, this is especially true if you do not have private profiles on the channels you're posting through, but honestly, even if you do have a private profile, I can guarantee for most people, there is at least someone in your follower list who you don't know well enough to trust with your sensitive information. While your follower list contains people that you wouldn't necessarily invite into your home while you're home alone, just don't post sensitive information. It's that simple. That note, it isn't a bad idea to audit your follower list every once in a while. Make sure that you actually want everyone who's in there to be in there, especially if you share a lot of your life on social media. I do apologize for being a bit of a Debbie Downer with that one, but I had to say it, it had to get out there. Lesson number two taught to me by Mother Data Science is the simplest solution is the best solution. This applies to pretty much everything you do in life, but I'm specifically referring to building machine learning models. When you're studying machine learning and data science and predictive modeling, it's very tempting to move towards the razzle dazzle, the fanciest models, of the land. I'm talking the neural nets, mastering TensorFlow, learning how to build all these crazy fancy models. In practice though, the vast majority of problems don't require ultra fancy, ultra complex algorithms and solutions. And in fact, they prefer the simplest solution possible that can do a good enough job. We want it to be as easy to understand and easy to implement as humanly possible. Why? Well, simple. I guess it's not that simple. <laughs> when our model fails or malfunctions, we need to be able to understand how the model is working under the hood so we can debug, solve the problem, move on with our lives. We want to avoid complexity because complexity introduces more room for error, more room for uncertainty. Also, we want to be able to interpret results effectively in a lot of different problems that we use machine learning and predictive modeling for. And that's kind of difficult to do if the engine is extremely complex or it's abstracted within a black box. As I previously mentioned, I spent the majority of my career in banking and because this is a regulated industry, I got really used to having to back up every single model that I build, make it as explainable as I possibly can, be able to clearly interpret and translate the results and why we're making the decisions we are based on this model. Of course, there are many problem areas where a complex solution is required to capture the signals in the data. Natural language processing, machine vision, a lot of social media search and recommendation algorithms. The lesson here is not to avoid complex solutions period. It's just to prioritize keeping the solution as simple as you can instead of chasing the cool, sexy, sparkly, high profile way of doing things. And this reminds me of a lesson that I apply to almost everything that I do in my life. Consistency over perfection. It may not feel exactly like a one-to-one -one relationship with the data science lesson. Throwing in some SQL terminology from my data freaks, you're welcome. But let me tell you why it feels the same to me. Simplicity over razzle-dazzle and consistency over perfection are both all about taking the practical approach as opposed to the aspirational one. I first adopted the consistency over perfection mindset as a university student struggling to maintain my high 90s high school average. It really wasn't in the cards for me to be this person once I got out of high school, but still I was killing myself studying and sacrificing other parts of my life to maintain maintain this image of this like perfect student. Then I switched things up a bit. I realized, okay, you know what? 
studying consistently and not trying to be perfect will get me to the same destination obtaining my math degree as going ham with a side of periodic burnout and also just constant stress. So why would I take the second path when I can take the first one? Yes, sure, being a straight B student doesn't sound nearly as cool as being a straight A student. But for my particular problem and the resources I had available, that was the way to go for me. After this experience, I've adopted this mentality for pretty much every goal I ever have for myself, whether it's eating healthy, maintaining a workout routine, posting YouTube videos. I try not to get tricked into having unrealistic expectations for myself in favor of achieving perfection. And this is tough to do in today's world because of this trendiness of hustle and productivity culture. And all you can see everywhere are people's highlights reels, highlights, highlight reels of them waking up at five in the morning and journaling and meditating and working out and having a green smoothie and a matcha. It's so easy to get tricked into thinking that this is what you need to be doing in order to achieve your goals. Striving for perfection is a magnet for ultimate burnout and failure, no matter how dreamy that image of a perfect outcome or perfect process looks. So if you're someone who finds it difficult to achieve a certain goal, I highly recommend you try to take the approach of taking the difficult out of your processes so that you can do them consistently. That's the goal. Last but certainly not least, a lesson that was quite difficult for me to learn as a data scientist, sometimes your projects will fail and that's okay. Data work is pretty unique in the sense that it can be a shot in the dark at times. Data science solutions rely on data, and the truth is that the data won't always have all of the answers. There is no guarantee that we'll be able to unleash the power of the information within the data to solve our problem. In fact, there's no guarantee that our data has any valuable information to begin with. Modeling and analytics work is experimental in nature. It's not the same kind of work as building a feature for an app, for example. If you wanted to build an app feature, you know your desired outcome and you can you have a reasonable guarantee that as long as you have the right resources and know-how you can build what you need to get to your outcome as a data scientist on the other hand you can have all the know-how in the world but if your data is useless and faulty sorry and you don't always know this from the beginning there isn't always a dead giveaway that your data you know, won't lead you to your desired solution so sometimes yes you will end up doing work and a lot of work just to end up back at square one. And as a data scientist, you have to be okay with the fact that failure is an option. And ideally, you wouldn't want to let this failure due to your data and the experimental nature of your work to ruin your day. After all, you've done the work and you've definitely learned something along the way. Even if you didn't learn what you were hoping to learn or solve what you were hoping to solve, you did gain something out of the experience and it made you a better data scientist. Going through this wasn't something I was prepared for before starting to work, but I learned to cope with it using a pretty cliche piece of life advice. Life is not fair, and all we can do is try to make the most out of our unideal situations. Every failure, will teach you something. Cheers to that. It's water, by the way, <laughs> in case anyone was wondering. Sometimes we have to fail or experience unexpected misfortune in order to pick up knowledge that we will need for the future. Besides that, the low points in life are what make the high points so awesome. Just keep riding the wave, using what you've learned in the dips to push you towards those peaks, those good times. Yeah. Moping around not only doesn't help you, but it can also distract you from absorbing the knowledge that you need to absorb from this unfortunate situation. So instead of screaming, why me? As you shake your fists in fury, ask yourself how this situation made you better in some way. In the case of data science, maybe a failed experiment made you a better data scientist because it taught you some signs of data inadequacy that you can look for in the future, or maybe just through the process of working with the data, you picked up on some new techniques in modeling or data visualization. In the case of life, every situation will at least give you the reminder that there are so many things in this world that are out of our control. But what is in our control is how we choose to react to the situations that we're in. So instead of regretting the fact that we don't have complete control over our lives, we get the chance to reflect on everything we do have control of and how how we can use it in this moment and in the future to propel ourselves forward. So make the call. Next time you're bummed out about something not working out for you, 
ask yourself, do you want to be upset about it? Or do you just want to skedaddle on with your metaphorical backpack filled with learnings? The choice is yours. Choose wisely. And there you have it. Data science has more to teach you than how to conduct proper A-B tests, clean data, and predict the future. Who knew? Yes, my friend, working with data brings you infinite wisdom that goes beyond getting really good at writing SQL queries. I actually have a few more of these data science life lessons in my back pocket, but I thought I would test the waters with my three favorite ones, which these were. So please let me know, did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you want to see more? Maybe don't tell me if you hated it. <laughs> If there's anything else you'd like to say or see in future videos, please let me know. I will catch you in the comments for that. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next Datalicious vid. I hope you have a Datalicious day. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.